On March 11, 2012, a single U.S. Army sergeant did more to hurt the U.S. war effort in Afghanistan than all the politicians and generals combined. Robert Bales killed 17 Afghan civilians in the incident known as the Kandahar Massacre. <laughs> Digging deeper, we find a deeply disturbed Staff Sergeant Robert Bales based in Joint Base Lewis McCord in Washington. It is worth noting that soldiers at this base have a disproportionate history of cracked behavior, with several shooting police officers waterboarding their own children in domestic violence. The main medical facility on that base had been accused of glossing over cases of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and giving a less serious diagnosis. Around midnight on March 11, 2012, Staff Sergeant Bales left his base in the Kandahar area of Afghanistan, put on traditional Afghan civilian clothes over his uniform, went to the nearby village, and commenced killing civilians. Halfway through his killing spree, he apparently went back to the base and then left again around 0300 hours, 3 a.m., for part two of his mad mission. Bales wore night vision goggles during his killing spree, allowing him to move about with stealth. Bales shot the majority of his victims in the head, which according to Afghan survivors meant putting his gun barrel in the mouth of children and then shooting them. Bales then desecrated the corpses by setting them on fire, which is an insult and sacrilege to Muslims. When Bales left the base the second time, Afghans reported to U.S. Army personnel about the soldier walking off the base in the middle of the night, which resulted in a base alert and a head count. Before a hastily mounted patrol could find him, Bales returned to the base and immediately surrendered, admitting what he had done, which of course was murder 17 civilians and wound six more. Sadly, nine of the victims were children. Bales was returned to the U.S. and faced a general court-martial at which he pled guilty to the murders in order to avoid the death penalty. He was reduced in rank to Private E-1 and dishonorably discharged, as well as being sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. This punishment, however, was deemed insufficient by the Afghan people, the Afghan government, and the families of victims. Afghans demanded that Bales be executed, and between the murders and the lack of a death sentence, relations between the U.S. forces and the Afghans were monumentally damaged. The U.S. government provided $50,000 to the family of each person killed, and $10,000 to each injured person. Although the payment was for assisting those people and not as compensation for their loss, many Afghans thought the amounts were an insult. Disturbing behavior by American forces was not limited to this terrible incident. Other allegations of murders and accidental, or as Afghans say, careless, killings of civilians with bombs and artillery had arisen, and well-publicized incidents of U.S. forces burning Korans and urinating on dead Taliban fighters made the news around the world. The Afghan government was under great pressure to kick U.S. troops out of the country, but they needed American money and military protection to stay in charge. By August of 2021, American and Afghan desire for the American military presence in Afghanistan had reached the breaking point, and President Biden ordered a withdrawal of U.S. combat troops. As a question for my students and subscribers, is the U.S. right to pull out its military forces from Afghanistan in 2021? Even in the U.S., there is heated debate. What do you think? Please let us know in the comment section below this video. If you like this video and would like to receive notification of new videos, please feel welcome to subscribe to History and Headlines and become one of our patrons. Your viewership is much appreciated.